<laughs> All right, this is my last one. This has been fun. So, <laughs> junior software developer engineer, they even got a number for it, fancy. Uh, government integrator. Contract to hire, look, this is the same job. Interesting. Uh, okay, we'll, we'll, we'll table that. We might look at that again, because um, I wanna point out something on there. Let's get started on this job though. So this looks like just by the title, it looks like it might be, it probably is. It's in the government sector. The thing about jobs in the government sector is sometimes you have to have a clearance. And if you don't have that clearance, right when you're trying to apply for this job, it may not work out for you. I don't know if they require a clearance for this. Let's look. Compensation, 35 to 45 hourly. That's on point. Um, no complaints here. Medical, dental, life, vision, 401k. Awesome. Full-time. Yes. Contract to hire. Position up to six months for a junior software developer. Oh, okay. So it looks like they're trying to advertise this as a junior software developer position. However, um, they say it's full time, but then they say, but wait a minute, if you're just a junior, then you're gonna be contract to hire for six months until we decide if you're good in this position and you wanna keep this position and we're good with where you're at. So that's kind of strange. Um, oh, I'm sorry, it's not strange, it's, to me, it's strange because I feel like they're trying to find someone with, someone with more experience, but they'd be willing to try out a junior level. Um, and instead of just saying that, they've kind of did this. So <laughs> that's kind of weird. I like things that are straightforward to the point. But let's continue. Two to seven years only. Oh, they are serious. All caps only. <laughs> oh, man. So for me... um. And it says no more than seven years of experience. Now, we said it was a junior software developer. So why would a junior software developer have seven years of experience? You wouldn't be a junior at that point. You'd be at least mid-level or um, uh, mid or even senior level at that point. So that's kind of strange. But again, it looks like, like I said, they look like they're trying to market to someone who has more experience, but they'd be willing to take a junior if it's the right fit. Again, it's not said, but it's kind of noted in the way that they word things, which you kind of had to pick apart. Um, qualification. So I would, I would pay attention to this. It's government related work and they're serious about it only being two to seven years of experience. So if you don't have two years of experience, honestly, I would say no at this point, but I would continue reading the job description because you might impress them. You never know. You just go down the list, see if you have any of this experience. Bachelor's or master's degree in a computer science or engineering related field. Hmm. I know I said in the other one that wanted a bachelor's degree, you know, don't worry about it. As long as you have a bachelor's degree, you're good. This is a little different because it is a government company. Now, and they're pretty serious about their stipulations. And it's not like a startup that can kind of bend their rules, like this is government related. So I would be leery of that when you're applying. So if you don't have an agree, a degree, a bachelor's degree in either one of these fields, and you want to apply for this job, I would push forward with passion. It goes on to say two to six years of experience using C++ application programming. Now, this experience can include educational coursework or educational projects. So if you are one of those people that are in college and you are studying for your bachelor's degree or you just got your degree or your master's degree in the computer science field or anything like that, this would be awesome for you. Also, if you're a bootcamp grad, I would apply for this as well, if only you had that C++ experience. Now, if you don't, again, I would be leery because it seems like they really don't wanna train anybody here. It seems like they would be willing to accept you if you already have that knowledge from prior coursework or other educational outlets. But if you don't, it seems like they really don't want to fool with the 
ability to have to train somebody. That's just what I'm seeing. Familiar, familiarity, familiar, familiarity, you know that word. This word with Linux or other Unix-like operating systems. Again, if you don't have that experience um, or if you don't even know what it is, mm, just know that. Keep a mental note for that in your brain and keep moving. Um, knowledge of software engineering processes. Things like this um, unfortunately come with a degree. Now, I'm pretty sure they're talking about like the software development life cycle in which you can just look up software development life cycle. Um, you could even look up software engineering processes if you want to and get some information there if you don't have that degree. But again, it seems like they're really wanting this degree and it's in the government related field. So I just keep kind of stacking on things from as I continue going forward. Let's look at the actual job. Let's look at what they want this person to do. Let's see if this stuff even makes any sense here. All right, so develop and maintain application level software for secure and non-secure telephone applications or other related te te tele tele telecommunication equipment. Sounds legit. <laughs> I'll say that much. It, it definitely sounds like this is going to be a secure job for you. So I'm telling you, if you have this skill set and you haven't applied yet, what are you waiting for? Um, but again, this is for me when I apply for this job. So far, no, this is intimidating for me. Um, code software using C++ and C programming languages in a Linux environment. Guys, this is a big one. I will tell this story very brief, but I was many moons ago when I was looking for a developer job, um, like the very first time right out of college, they asked me about Linux. I didn't have that experience. And they are saying, well, they really need someone with Linux. So unfortunately, we're going to have to pass. Um, so it didn't matter about anything else. That mattered to them. Linux mattered to them. So you can't really tell solidly um, if that is something that they're really interested in but you can kind of get an idea you're like yeah they really are interested in this they really need you to have this ability and so i would kind of i wouldn't take this with a grain of salt here if you really don't know it be honest about that and try to execute software unit tests again testing is important guys Oh, let me let me just stop. Let's just say all of these. I went through four job descriptions, and I tell you, I think every one of them had testing in it. So let's start testing. <laughs> you got to do it. It's important. Derive document software requirements and perform preliminary and detailed design. Okay. So basically, um, what you're trying to do here is get get a design and code it. That's what I take that to mean. So yes, that's kind of like just going through the whole process. Again, they spout two to seven years only. Guys, there's probably a reason they say this. About government integrated, and it, it, they basically what they do is do government and federal projects. Okay, cool. At this point, um, I probably wouldn't apply for this job. And the reason why I wouldn't apply for it is because it seems like they're really looking for someone with more experience. They're looking for someone with that bachelor's degree. Now, do I have that good degree? Yes. Do I know C++? No. Do I care to learn C++? No. I really don't want to get into C++. I've done C++ a very, very, very long time ago back in college. Um, and that's the first language I learned. But it's not something I want to go back into in my life at this time um so yeah for that reason i would say no however if it was you looking at this job description and this stuff appeased you if you were like hey i want to work with c plus plus i don't have two to years of experience um two to seven years of experience but i would love to work with c plus plus i know a little bit about linux um and you know i don't know all about testing 
but I do know that it's an important thing and that I do want to integrate it more. And if you have that feeling, if there's something that you're lacking in here and you're like, I don't really know, I would go ahead and apply and just see what happens. But while you're waiting, don't just sit back and wait for this job per the person to respond. Start running some tests right that way when someone does come back you're like hey you know what i didn't know testing at that time but i ran a couple tests on some old applications i did and i had i felt pretty good about the process and i'd, I'd be more than happy to show you my code for that um that's initiative and they're not it doesn't on here it doesn't say anything about showing initiative but that's what everybody wants that's what everybody needs. They just want someone who's excited about doing what they're doing, willing to dig deeper to find out how to do the best at, at their job. That's what everybody really wants for any job. Um, but you could only convey that if it's something that is positive, if it's really within you. If not, it's going to show. Um, let me go back to this because um, I wanted to point out something here very quickly. Um this is the LinkedIn job description for this same job at this same place. Um, and this one says two to eight years. <laughs> it's it's kind of weird. The um, Some things get kind of bottled up and, and, and they have things on here that are not on the other one. So that's kind of weird. So it makes me think, this said this was posted seven days ago. This one was posted 17 days ago. So this is an older one. So this is a more updated one. And so looking at the updated one, it, I don't see anything on here that says junior software developer to engineer, except here it says entry level. However, I've seen entry level here and it's definitely not an entry level position. And I think people just forget to change this category when they post the job, that could happen. Again, shouldn't deter you though. Um, academic or employment experience will apply so this is awesome like I said if you're one of those people that did a coding boot camp if you're a person that is studying for your degree if you self-taught yourself and you have projects to show it that's this is you right here like this is good academic and employment experience so they're saying everything you've learned while you were learning um, and anything that you learned while you were working bring it on we want to hear about it so that's an important thing um, a couple of other things I did want to point out with this is that um, they mention other things here like public and private classes like if you didn't know that that has to do with object-oriented programming and if you didn't know about that you probably shouldn't apply to this job but um, it does have to do with OOP and so if you aren't very good with OOP you might think about that as well heap and virtual memory this is something I I've heard of and so it's one of those things where if they're throwing out concepts to you in the job description and you don't know what they are go learn them figure those out and show that that, that you learn those things that's an important thing to do but you don't want to rush it don't just run and look up one definition and be done look at examples look at different definitions that other people are giving for this um, look and see if there's any um like any books or anything on it that you might could read to understand about this more like i'm saying if you're really interested in it it's gonna show um it's i think this whole thing is is pretty much the same the one thing i like about linkedin when you do have like when you're trying to apply for jobs is it tells you how many people have applied as you can tell there's only two applicants here on LinkedIn that I've applied. Now this is only specifically for LinkedIn, so it doesn't give you an idea of everyone that's applied. And they could have a website that has the same job description. They had a lot of submissions there. It doesn't account for those. But this gives you kind of a good idea of like, who's, are, are people really applying for this job? And there's only two people that have applied. I'm willing to bet that at the most, there's 10 in, in every outlet that they've put this job description on. So if they have like, maybe five outlets or three different outlets. That's not a lot of people applying to this job. And it's the intensity of this job description. It's these things that kind of deter people. And I think those are the things that you should go for if you really, if this appeases to you, go for it. Any job description that you look into. Um, 
I really wanted to just show this part off because I think that's so important. And like I said, you don't have it everywhere and now everybody's gonna advertise on in and LinkedIn, but it's pretty cool to see it when, you, when you're able to do it. I promise it's the last thing. It says must answer screen questions. So with that, I would pay very attention, pay, pay very attention, I'd pay close attention to things like public and private classes, heap and virtual memory. I'm willing to bet, you see it's not here. You you don't have OOP on here and you definitely don't have public and private classes and definitely don't have pub, uh, heap and virtual memory on this job description. They probably didn't have a lot of luck with this, which is why they put it over here. Must answer screen questions right let's go back to that thought check these things out if you want to apply for this job look up these things understand this know what all that entails OOP public and private classes heap in virtual memory look up those things because I guarantee you on this screen question <laughs> they're probably gonna ask you about it and this could either be on the phone with a recruiter or it could be when you apply. I don't know. Either way, they're gonna ask you about it. So for me, this would be a no. I have already told you the reasons why, but if it fits up your alley, go for it. That's all I got, guys. I thank you for joining me. Thank you for listening in on this. Um, if it was helpful for you, give me a thumbs up, like this video, give me any comments you got below. I'd love to hear from you. And I'll see you in the next one. Bye guys, take care.